Welcome everyone to a new free art lesson this week at Kornowski Originals. You can view these art lessons at KornowskiOriginals.com or our YouTube channel. And I believe that my wonderful wife Jennifer is going to be editing one of these for the first time. And she's been using a lot of her skills on her Facebook page for True Vine Academy. So uh, check that out if you get a moment. Anyways, we're going to get right into it. We're gonna do some pen and ink today. How, how would you like that today? We'll do some pen and ink demonstration. I have a picture off camera that's by Rembrandt and it's called The Three Trees, one of my favorites. It's very simple, it's not very elaborate, but it's perfect for demonstrating some very simple techniques. So we're gonna start out like a pencil drawing in our first free uh, art lesson. On KronelskiOriginals.com, we have one called basic drawing techniques, I believe. Well, this one's gonna be pen and ink, so we're actually gonna be starting with pencil, and then we're gonna build up from there. Uh, hopefully keep it within 30 minutes. I don't wanna go longer than that. So let's get right into it. First off, I'm gonna actually sketch this picture out. We have our horizon line, so remember we're holding our pencil back a ways and we're holding it in such a way that we can get the most out of our drawing technique. So if you need a reminder, you're basically pinching the pencil like this, and then you're resting it on your middle finger. So if you could see that, that allows you to move your hand a lot more than usual. So the same goes for when I'm sketching out a picture, I'm actually gonna back my fingers off the tip because if I get too close, I'm getting really hard lines and it's gonna make a mess. So I'm just gonna do a quick little sketch out here. Now remember, you, you may not draw as fast as me, so don't worry about it. You can always pause me, and you can catch up while you're working on your own, and you can do your own uh, demonstration or sketch of this scene. So really all it is, it's very simple. It's a grouping of three trees out in the distance. They obviously had said something to Rembrandt, maybe that land was you know in the family or somewhere he went as a kid i don't know but they kind of spoke to him so to speak so we're going to work on these trees today and there's some clouds up here in the sky i want to demonstrate pen and ink today because it's important to get good at pen and ink to help you get good at pencil drawing you can see i can get this this light shading here because again i'm backed off the tip of my pencil and the original art is more like an engraving. Rembrandt was famous for his engravings and his etchings, I should say. I've tried etching before. It wasn't really my personal favorite, so I don't know if I'll ever demonstrate it. So I'm just getting this nice little sketch here. And then in a moment, I'll pull out the pen and ink, you could probably use just about any pen and ink, uh, I should say pen that you want. I'm actually gonna use one that's extra bold today. But I've used Bic pens, and if you know a Bic, it's just a simple ballpoint pen. And I would just sit and sketch with that for hours outdoors. I would just fill up notebooks with drawings, and that's really what you wanna do is just get really good at drawing, because then if you wanna paint someday, you'll become a very good painter. So once you get the sketch out, we're not gonna get very detailed. And I'm not doing a very detailed job today of Rembrandt's piece of art here. I'm gonna do more of a sketch of it because for time constraints and I wanna fit it into a 30 minute project here, we're gonna keep it quite simple. So again, I'm not really, really close to the end of the pen and a lot of times when you're drawing you look closely at a Vincent Van Gogh painting or drawing I'm, I'm sorry he actually just uses little just scribbles and what you need to do is when you're working on something and you want to get it right you're drawing you're looking at what you're drawing because you have to look at that then you're glancing at the subject matter back and forth so your eyes kind of will be bouncing like this 
they'll be bouncing like this and then you can make a quick adjustments a lot of people when they're drawing they're just looking at their drawing and they look back at the picture and it's very different so that's a key you won't be able to see that on camera but when you're drawing maybe five seconds five seconds look at subject matter five seconds look at your drawing and back and forth so you're constantly making the adjustments so it's very key in in working on art unless you're working from your imagination I highly recommend people learn to draw from subject matter first before just going straight into imaginary work. Just practice drawing a tree or, or uh, anything, your, your pet or whatever, almost from life or even from a photograph. And when you get really good at that, then you can jump right into imaginary work. So here's a little background here, and we're just kind of getting a, an outline. Some branches up here, and then I'll show you how we go about getting into cross hatching. Cross hatching is pretty fun, and it's actually pretty simple. So for example, if I want to cross hatch right now, and maybe I just want to get this pond framed out here. The way I would go about it is there's straight lines and when you first start cross hatching, you may not be very well trained at it. That's okay, just keep working at it. You see what I'm doing is I'm just creating straight lines, feathering them in together. They don't have to be perfect. I'll even draw them in. I'm going to push this drawer in just a little bit. I'll draw them in just, just kind of scribbled in even. I'll work from one side to another. Sometimes you're doing a lot of cross hatching. You're, you're constantly working one pattern over another. I'll show you what I mean by that once I kind of work this in a little bit more. There's like a really deep plane back there, so I'm gonna leave this open. It's like farm fields. Okay. So what do you do now that your cross hatching maybe is only a certain darkness? Then you go another direction. So you can go like this. And remember, you don't have to have perfect lines when you do it either. It's just that there's a consistency in those lines. So you don't have one spot that's really dark and another spot that's really, really light. I may just focus on the trees for for lack of time today. But I want to use this foreground like uh, an example of what I'm talking about when I'm when I'm saying let's cross hatch. So you did you see how I went one way and another? Well the, now we're gonna go this way and it's gonna it's gonna get darker. And this is called cross hatching. It allows you to cover a lot of ground with a pen. But have you noticed when you do pencil, you can cross hatch, but pen doesn't allow you to smear anything. You can't smear. Shading is different with pen. You, you must cross hatch. If you're not cross hatching, what, what is the other option? Dots, called pointillism. So this is a really dark foreground that, and these trees are casting, let's say, a, a morning sunrise shadows across the ground. You could see here, this is where I can kind of just let my arm just flow really, really easily here, creating lines. I think my pen was being lifted too high, so then it kind of ran out of ink here. Let's see if I can find another one.
or I just ran it out of ink. Let's give this a shot. I think ballpoint pens will do that too. If you have the ink pointed up, it can't flow down. Okay. So maybe you're getting the gist of what cross hatching is. So we're gonna work our way back from a different direction, not the same direction. Because in this original drawing, this whole foreground is like really dark. It's all shadows. But this is a really good, it's a good demonstration of, of just cross hatching. You can see, sometimes it's very tedious. You're just constantly doing lines. Well, that's art. That's really anything. Whether you say you're like my wife and you like to bake and cook, well, she's got to do the same things over and over sometimes. And it's like that with everything. But it's fun. I've had a lot of people tell me over the years, I don't know how you have the patience to do that. Well, people tend to have the patience to do the things, obviously, that they enjoy doing, so it doesn't bother them. Okay, so once I get done with this direction, maybe we'll move on to the trees. You can see you can you see how we're going in a third direction now to do cross hatching. And then when you get to the edge sometimes when you're sketching, you just kind of let it fade off. You don't have to get crazy with it. It's your drawing, do what you want, right? And like Bob Ross would say, there's there's no mistakes, there's just happy little accidents, something like that. So again, cross hatching, we're pen and ink drawing. So when you need to shade something, you're gonna have to cross hatch it in. You can see I'm just drawing little straight little lines for the trunk of the trees. Can you see that? And then, I'm kind of going to put a little border around those trees. Happy little trees. And again, let's do this. Oh, let me uh, let me work this in over here. Don't get too crazy with your backgrounds because remember aerial perspective. There's a lot of atmosphere between you and the background. So that's why things get hazy as they go further back. So don't get really dark with that. Just, you know, put a couple lines there to show and then, of course, this is like farmland here. And then we'll just kind of frame this out a little bit. And what we have here now are the trees that need a little bit of TLC here. We're going to do our cross hatching technique. I've spent many hours just sitting out in a field somewhere just drawing whatever I saw. Started out drawing as a child, drawing my favorite baseball players, you know, just my favorite ship, the Titanic, for some reason, just, uh, I was just fixated on that as, as a child. That's before the big movie came out with Leonardo DiCaprio. And uh, yeah, just drew whatever I thought was interesting and that's really how it starts you draw what interests you and it's still today I do a lot of portraiture because people are interesting to me in their different walks of life and their stories and remember you can't see me off camera doing this but I'm constantly like I'm looking at you right now looking at the subject matter drawing at the same time you see, I'm just constantly, I'm constantly making adjustments. That's how you make sure that your picture doesn't get off track. So now we're going the other direction. It's almost like one way, another way, and then diagonal, and then diagonal. So it's kind of, kind of like this, a diagonal, diagonal, a straight down, straight across. Those are my main directions of cross hatching. And it's worked for me for years. And enabled me to express what I see on paper 
you got to be pretty bold when you're working with pen and ink because uh, unless you got some white out hand white out handy uh, you you're gonna have to live with that mark you left but that's why you're constantly working and sometimes it's a matter of how good are you at hiding a mistake right it's like my jazz teacher taught me once back in school days if you play a sour note boys just play another one that way people will not realize that it was a mistake that you, that you did it on purpose I don't know if that applies to everything in life but it does in art sometimes and we're, we're still cross hashing across the top here and then once we get more of a basis then I'll start working in some details I'm gonna use cross hatching straight up and down now again this is Rembrandt's famous etching called the three trees you can google it and enjoy it for yourself hopefully on a blown up image so you can see some of the cool little details Let's see if I can get my ink flowing again here Again, some of these pens, they they don't like being held up. Now, typically, I don't draw in this direction, but for the sake of the camera, sometimes the ink doesn't want to flow upward, so. So I will, I will go ahead and tip this downward and get that gravity drop, bring the ink out at the tip. Again, I'm just using a precise V5. You can really use what you want. It's a rolling ball pen. I like them for some reasons, other reasons I don't. You got any questions on what's a good ink pen, you can always ask. I'll write you back. But I don't get caught up with, uh, you know, what do I use? You know, it's not great art supplies that make great art. I've seen people use stuff that Quite frankly, uh, I've seen mechanical pencils that are just a like a Bic brand make some beautiful drawings in pencil. So it really doesn't matter. I don't get hung up on that. So now I'm kind of evening things out. I'm just glancing around at everything. You got to be able to look at the entire picture sometimes at once, and then you also have to be able to look closely at a detail and constantly keeping things. You know inconsistency right now I'm kind of working over the entire area I'm gonna cross hatch over the tree trunk again got to get that a little darker we're painting these happy little trees so Bob Ross and Rembrandt had something in common they both they both liked happy little trees There's a lot of shadow here, because like we said, it's probably an early sunrise, something like that. And then we're gonna, what you're gonna find out when you're in nature, you'll probably end up bordering things out strong. Because this thing's kind of standing out in the picture, so I don't want it to fade on the edges, I want it Kind of nice and dark and bold here. And now we're gonna put a little bit more depth into the trees themselves. What I mean by that is, there's some places inside the branches that can be darker. And this is where you gotta pick and choose. I'm constantly looking back and forth at Rembrandt's original drawing and mine. I'm constantly making adjustments and I know it's not gonna be perfect, so I don't care about that. But I want to do a good, I want to do the original justice, so to speak. Check our time here and see how much time we have. Okay, we're looking okay. See if we can finish this lesson up in the next 10 minutes. I'm having so much fun. I got to watch the clock because all of a sudden I'll be at an hour and where did the time go? Ok, 
Okay. I guess it's not as important to finish the entire drawing as it is to just display the techniques properly so you guys can go ahead and finish it yourselves. And if these art lessons are helping you with your art, please write in, write a comment. If you'd like to see something maybe that you would like demonstrated, maybe I can do it and I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, make a video on it. Right now, when I draw, it's hard to explain, but it's like tiny little scribbles, just little scribbles. I'm not really cross hatching anymore because I've laid the foundation of the shadow. So now I'm literally making kind of like these tiny little swooping scribbles almost. In fact, I have just a piece of paper here and it kind of looks like this. It's hard to see on camera, but I'm literally going like this. But that's after I put in all the work with the basis of this, understand? And I use that technique I just showed you with things like trees or bushes or whatever. I might use it here, down here where there's some bushes. But if this, let's just say this is smooth grass going down to this pond, then I'm not gonna use those squiggles like that because it's it would throw off the texture because I'm also paying attention to the texture of things. So let's just say this is grass here. That's why I'm going like this. But down here where there might be bushes and shrubs, I'm using that scribbly technique to give it texture. Okay, back up into the trees using the technique I just showed you off camera or uh, off this picture, I should say. I am working in these little details. This is exactly what I did. I mean, 20 years ago, I was doing a lot of drawing outside. You go through phases sometimes, but I always think you should always have a drawing book going. And always have your, your iPhone, your Android camera ready. Take pictures and make like a folder in your phone or in your, you know, your online storage of ideas photo reference I call it just like somebody they're getting ready to build a house they're taking photos everything they can imagine that inspires them same thing so I think we're kind of rounding the corner on these trees I'm for lack of time I'm just focusing on the trees but I think it gets the point across of how we go about cross hatching cross hatching pen and ink do your quick drawing, you just loosen it, get a loose drawing going, and then get right into it. If you make a mistake, try to hide it, and if you can't, it's okay, keep going. You know, unless you spilled ink all over the paper or something, I, I get it, but usually not the case. Most times people just throw their art out, they don't give themselves a chance at finishing it. So now I'm kind of getting in some of these darks, picking and choosing which ones. I'm going to check out the camera and see what you guys see. Not bad, kind of the idea I want. Hope I'm doing Rembrandt justice here. But we're having fun. Uh, the other thing I was saying when you're cross hatching, if you're not gonna cross hatch as a pen and ink artist, you're gonna have to do this. It's either you're doing the lines, you know, cross hatch, or it's called pointillism, and you go like this. You just sit and put the ink down just constantly. And I've done this, trust me. I spent about a week and a half. Can you see how I'm just putting points? That's pointillism. And you can blend with it and do all kinds of stuff with it. it. Takes a lot longer though than just putting a line down. But it's a lot of fun. I mean, I think I spent 16 days on a 16 box grid drawing once that I did. 
and it was a lot of work. The picture of Hank Aaron of the Atlanta Braves and just kind of my hero growing up, even if he was a little bit more before my time. Um, I just love what he did in baseball, but uh, I did a pointillism picture of him and yeah, it was 16 boxes and each day I'd do a box and I was pretty happy with it when I was done. But you really gotta discipline yourself in art. If you're gonna be a really good artist, take an hour a day and just do some art. If you got more time, do it, but don't burn yourself out. I've done that before and it's not gonna help you. You gotta give yourself rest just like bodybuilders can give themselves time in between. It's the best way to grow. The healing process happens while you're not doing anything. As long as you're on a good regimen, that's when your muscles heal up. Same thing with art too. It's like mental muscles. How long can you go doing sometimes the same thing like this? Okay, so to finish up this art lesson, I'm gonna create a little bit more shadow here. Also, you can find us on takelessons.com and we do live inter interactive art lessons through their website. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot more fun when we can work with people live. So please, if you wanna learn how to do oil painting, Oil pastel, pen and ink, Prismacolor, colored pencils or pencil. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll even teach you how down the road to get into the level of doing portraiture. I'll just put some stuff out here on the edge. I feel like there's a little bit more I could explain with the pen here, just toward the end of the branches. And I think that'll just about do it for this art lesson. We'll keep it short and sweet. The picture's not finished, of course. There's more that we could do with it. But I think it kind of represents what you can accomplish with pen and ink, just a simple pen, cross-hatching, pointillism. And uh, remember, you can check out all the free art lessons at KornowskiOriginals.com. Uh, there should be also being at uh, YouTube also. And check us out on Take Lessons if you want uh, some scheduled art lessons. And uh, look forward to meeting you there. Thank you so much for your time. And happy drawing.